You are about to embark upon the great crusade. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Welcome back to the Army Flashcards Ranger School podcast. We're going to get straight into this one. This is Chapter 7, Patrols of the Ranger Handbook, and it is an extremely long chapter. But it's a pretty awesome one with uh, a lot of really important information for Ranger School. So one final reminder, if you want more resources, just check out our website, armyflashcards.com. And with that, let's begin. Chapter 7, Patrols. To survive on the battlefield, stealth, dispersion, and security is enforced in all tactical movements. The leader is skilled in all movement techniques. Refer to ATP 3-21.8 for more information. Principles 7-1 All patrols are governed by five principles. Planning, reconnaissance, security, control, and common sense. In brief, each principle involves Planning Quickly make a simple plan and effectively communicate it to the lowest level. A great plan that takes forever to complete and is poorly disseminated is not a great plan. Plan and prepare to a realistic standard and rehearse everything. Reconnaissance Your responsibility as a ranger leader is to confirm what you think you know and to learn that which you do not already know. Security Preserve your force as a whole. Every ranger and every rifle counts. Either one could be the difference between victory and defeat. Control Clarify the concept of the operation and commander's intent, coupled with disciplined communications to bring every soldier and weapon available, to overwhelm the enemy at the decisive point. Common sense. Use all available information and good judgment to make sound, timely decisions. Planning, 7-2. Planning considerations common to most patrols include task organization, initial planning and coordination, completion of the plan, and contingency planning. A patrol is a detachment sent out by a larger unit to conduct a specific mission. 7-3. Patrols operate semi-independently and return to the main body upon completion of their mission. Patrolling fulfills the infantry's primary function of finding the enemy to engage them or report their disposition, location, and actions. Patrols act as the eyes and ears of the larger unit, and as a fist to deliver a sharp, devastating jab and then withdraw before the enemy can recover. Some definitions associated with patrols are Patrol Sent out by a larger unit to conduct a specific combat, reconnaissance, or security mission. A patrol's organization is temporary and specifically matched to the immediate task. Because a patrol is an organization, not a mission, it is not correct to speak of giving a unit a mission to patrol. Patrolling or conducting a patrol. The semi-independent operation conducted to accomplish the patrol's mission. A patrol requires a specific task and purpose. Employment. The commander sends a patrol out from the main body to conduct a specific tactical task with an associated purpose. Upon completion of that task, the patrol leader returns to the main body, reports to the commander and describes the events that took place, the status of the patrol's members and equipment, and any observations that were made. Leadership If a patrol is made up of an organic unit, such as a rifle squad, the squad leader is responsible. If a patrol is made up of mixed elements from several units, an officer or non-commissioned officer is designated as the patrol leader. This temporary title defines their role and responsibilities for that mission. The patrol leader may designate an assistant, normally the next senior soldier in the patrol, and any subordinate element leaders required. Size A patrol can be a unit as small as a fire team. Squad size and platoon sign patrols are normal. Sometimes for combat tasks such as raid, the patrol can consist of most of the combat elements of a rifle company. Unlike operations in which the infantry platoon or squad is integrated into a larger organization, the patrol is semi-independent and relies on itself for security. 7-4. There are common elements of all patrols and teams. Elements and teams for platoons conducting patrols include Reconnaissance and Surveillance, or RNS teams. Normally used in a zone reconnaissance, but may be useful in any situation when it is impractical to separate the responsibilities for reconnaissance and security. When these responsibilities are separate, the security element provides security at danger areas, secures the ORP, isolates the objective, and supports the withdrawal of the rest of the platoon once the reconnaissance is complete. The security element may have separate security teams, each with an assigned task or sequence of tasks. Assault element. 
seizes and secures the objective and protects special teams as they complete their assigned actions on the objective. Security element. Provides security at danger areas, secures the ORP, isolates the objective, and supports the withdrawal of the rest of the patrol once actions on the objective are complete. The security element may have separate security teams, each with an assigned task or sequence of tasks. Support element. Provides direct and indirect fire support for the unit. Direct fires include machine guns, medium and light anti-armor weapons, and small recoilless rifles. The available indirect fires may include mortars, artillery, close air support, and organic M320 weapon systems. Demolition Team Responsible for preparing and detonating the charges to destroy designated equipment, vehicles, or facilities on the objective. Enemy Prisoner of War, EPW, and Search Teams The Assault Element may provide two Ranger Buddy Teams or four Ranger Fire Team Search Teams to search bunkers, buildings, or tunnels on the objective. These teams search the objective or kill zone for any PIR that may give the PL any idea of the enemy concept for future operations. Primary and alternate teams may be assigned to ensure enough prepared personnel are available on the objective. Breach element. Conducts initial penetration of enemy obstacles to seize a foothold and allow the patrol to enter an objective. This is typically done according to METTC and the steps outlined in the conduct the initial breach of a mind wire obstacle in Chapter 8 of this publication. Reconnaissance Teams Recon the objective area from various vantage points once the security teams are in position. Normally, reconnaissance teams are two soldier teams to reduce the possibility of detection. Initial Planning and Coordination 7-5 Leaders plan and prepare for patrols using the troop leading procedures and estimation of the situation, as described in Chapter 2. Through an estimate of the situation, leaders identify required actions on the objective, mission analysis, and plan backward to departure from friendly lines and forward to re-entry of friendly lines. Because patrolling units act independently, move beyond the direct fire support of the parent unit and operate forward of friendly units. Coordination is thorough, detailed, and continuous throughout planning and preparation. PLs use checklists to avoid omitting any items vital to the accomplishment of the mission. 7-6 Coordination with higher headquarters includes intelligence, operations, and fire support. This initial coordination is an integral part of the troop planning procedures. Step 3, make a tentative plan. The leader also coordinates the unit's patrol activities with the leaders of other units that would be patrolling in adjacent areas at the same time. Completion of the plan 7-7 As the PL completes the plan, specified and applied tasks are considered. The PL ensures that all specified tasks to be performed on the objective at rally points, danger areas, security or surveillance locations, along the routes and at passage lanes are assigned. These make up the maneuver and task to maneuver unit subparagraphs of the execution paragraph. 7-8 The PL also considers key travel and execution times. The leader estimates time requirements for movement to the objective, leader's reconnaissance of the objective, establishment of security and surveillance, completion of all assigned tasks on the objective, and passage through friendly lines. Some planning factors are movement, average of one kilometer per hour, during daylight hours in woodland terrain, an average limited visibility of half a kilometer per hour. Add additional time for restrictive or severely restrictive terrain, such as mountains, swamps, or thick vegetation. Leaders reconnaissance, not later than one and a half hours. Establishment of security and surveillance, half an hour. 7-9, the leader selects primary and alternate routes to and from the objective. The return routes should differ from the routes to the objective. The PL may delegate route selection to a subordinate, but is ultimately responsible for the route selected. 7-10. The leader should consider the use of special signals. These include hand and arm signals, flares, voice, whistles, radios, and infrared equipment. Primary and alternate signals must be identified and rehearsed so that all rangers know their meaning. Password systems to consider are Odd number system. The leader specifies an odd number. The challenge can be any number less than the specified number. The password is the number that must be added to it to equal the specified number. For example, the number is 7, the challenge is 3, and the password is 4. Running Password This code word alerts a unit that friendly rangers are approaching in a less than organized manner and possibly under pressure. The number of rangers approaching follows the running password. For example, if the running password is ranger and 5 friendly rangers are approaching, they would say ranger 5. 7-11 Always know the location of leaders. The PL considers where the PSG and other key leaders are located during each phase of the mission. The PL is positioned to best control the actions of the patrol. 
The platoon sergeant is normally located with the assault element during a raid or attack to help the PL control the use of additional assaulting squads and assist with securing the objective. The platoon sergeant locates at the casualty collection point to facilitate casualty treatment and evacuation. During a reconnaissance mission, the platoon sergeant stays behind in the ORP to facilitate the transfer of intelligence to higher headquarters and control the reconnaissance element's movement into and out of the ORP. 7-12 Unless required by the mission, the unit avoids enemy contact. The leader's plan addresses actions on enemy contact at each phase of the patrol mission. The unit's ability to continue depends on how early contact is made, whether the platoon is able to break contact successfully so that its subsequent direction of movement is undetected, and whether the unit receives any casualties due to the contact. The plan addresses the handling of seriously wounded rangers and those KIA. The plan also addresses the handling of prisoners who are captured because of chance contact but are not part of the planned mission. 7-13. The leader leaves the unit for many reasons throughout the planning, coordination, preparation, and execution of the patrol mission. Each time the leader departs the patrol main body, a five-point contingency plan is issued to the leader left in charge of the unit. The patrol leader issues additional specific guidance stating what tasks are to be accomplished in his absence. The contingency plan is remembered using the memory aid Gatwa, G, where the leader is going, O, others he is taking with him, T, Time the leader plans to be gone. W. What to do if the leader does not return in time. A. Actions by the unit in the event contact is made while the leader is gone. A stay behind leader is designated until returning. 7 14. The leader considers the use and location of rally points. A rally point is a place designated by the leader where the unit moves to reassemble and reorganize if it becomes dispersed. Rangers know which rally point to move to at each phase of the patrol mission should they become separated from the unit. They also know what actions are required there and how long they are to wait at each rally point before moving to another. The most common types of rally points include initial, in route, objective, and near side and far side rally points. Rally points must be easily identifiable in daylight and limited visibility, show no signs of recent enemy activity, covered and concealed from the ground and air, away from natural lines of drift and high speed avenues of approach, defendable for short periods of time. 7-15 the objective rally point typically lies 200 to 400 meters from the objective, or at a minimum, one major terrain feature away. Actions at the ORP include conducting seals and pinpoint location, conducting a leader's reconnaissance of the objective, issuing a frag ord if needed, making final preparations before continuing operations, for example, recamouflage, prepare demolitions, line up rucksacks for quick recovery, prepare EPW bindings, first aid kits and litters, and inspect weapons. Accounting for rangers and equipment after completing actions on the objective. Disseminating information from reconnaissance if no contact was made. 7-16 The plan includes the leader's reconnaissance of the objective once the platoon or squad establishes the ORP. Before departing, the leader issues a 5-point contingency plan. During reconnaissance, the leader pinpoints the objective, selects reconnaissance, security, support, and assault positions for the elements, and adjusts the plan based on observation of the objective. 7-17 each type of patrol requires different tasks during the leader's reconnaissance. The leader brings different elements with him. These are discussed separately under each type of patrol. The leader plans time to return to the ORP, complete the plan, disseminate information, issue orders and instructions, and allow the squads to make any additional preparations. During the leader's reconnaissance for a raid or ambush, the PL leaves surveillance on the objective. Each type of patrol also requires different actions on the objective. Actions on the objective are discussed under each type of patrol. Reconnaissance Patrols 7-18 Area and Zone Reconnaissance Patrols provide timely and accurate information on the enemy and terrain and confirm the leader's plan before it is executed. Units on Reconnaissance Operations collect specific information PIR, or general information based on the instructions from their higher commander. 7-19 In order to have a successful area reconnaissance, the PL applies the fundamentals of the reconnaissance to the plan while conducting the operation. To obtain required information, the parent unit tells the patrol leader what information is needed. This is in the form of the information requirement and priority intelligence requirements. The platoon's mission is then tailored to what information is required. During the entire patrol, members continuously gain and exchange all information gathered, but cannot consider the mission accomplished until all PIR has been gathered. 7-20 A patrol avoids letting the enemy know that it is in the objective area. If the enemy knows that they are observed, they may move, change plans, or increase security measures. Methods of avoiding detection are 
minimizing movement in the objective area for area reconnaissance, moving no closer to the enemy than necessary, using long-range surveillance or MBDs if possible, using camouflage, stealth, and noise and light discipline, minimizing radio traffic. 7-21. A patrol must be able to break contact and return to the friendly unit with what information is gathered. If necessary, they break contact and continue the mission. Leaders in place security elements where they can overwatch the reconnaissance elements. They suppress the enemy so the reconnaissance element can break contact. 7-22. When the platoon leader receives the order, the mission is analyzed to ensure it is understood what is to be done. The PL task organizes the platoon to accomplish the mission in accordance with METC. A reconnaissance is typically a squad size mission. The types of reconnaissance are area reconnaissance. The area reconnaissance patrol collects all available information on PIR and other intelligence not specified in the order for the area. The patrol completes the reconnaissance and reports all information by the time specified in the order. The patrol is not compromised. Zone reconnaissance. The zone reconnaissance patrol determines all PIR and other intelligence not specified in the order for its assigned zone. The patrol recons without detection by the enemy. The patrol completes the reconnaissance and reports all information by the time specified in the order. Actions on the objective, area reconnaissance. 7-23 The element occupies the ORP as discussed in the section on occupation of the ORP. See figure 7-1, page 7-6. The RTO reports to higher headquarters that the unit has occupied the ORP. The leader confirms the location on the map, while subordinate leaders make necessary perimeter adjustments. The PL organizes the platoon in one of two ways, separate reconnaissance and security elements, or combined reconnaissance and security elements. 7-24 The PL takes subordinate leaders and key personnel on a leader's reconnaissance to confirm the objective and plan. The PL also issues a five-point contingency plan before departure, establishes a suitable RP that is beyond sight and sound of the objective if possible, but is definitely out of sight. The RP should also have good rally point characteristics. Allow all personnel to become familiar with the rally point and surrounding area. Identifies the objective and places surveillance. Designates a surveillance team to keep the objective under surveillance. And issues a contingency plan to the senior soldier remaining with the surveillance team. The surveillance team is positioned with one soldier facing the objective and one facing back in the direction of the release point. Take subordinate leaders forward to pinpoint the objective. Establish a limit of advance and choose vantage points. Maintains communications with the platoon throughout the leader's reconnaissance. 7-25. The platoon sergeant maintains security, supervises priorities of work in the ORP, and re-establishes security at the ORP. The platoon sergeant also disseminates the PL's contingency plan, oversees preparation of reconnaissance personnel, soldiers are camouflaged, MVDs and binoculars prepared, weapons on safe with a round in the chamber, and other duties. 7-26. The PL and reconnaissance party return to the ORP. The PL confirms the plan or issues a frag ord and allows subordinate leaders time to disseminate the plan. 7-27. The patrol conducts the reconnaissance by long-range observation and surveillance if possible. RNS elements move to observation points that offer cover and concealment and are outside of small arms range. Establishes a series of OPs if information cannot be gathered from one location and gathers all PIR using the salute format. 7-28. If necessary, the patrol conducts this reconnaissance by short-range observation and surveillance. See figure 7-1. Moves to an observation post near the objective, passes close enough to the objective to gain information, and gathers all PIR using the salute format. 7-29 RNS teams move using a technique such as the cloverleaf method to move to successive OPs. In this method, RNS teams avoid paralleling the objective site, maintain extreme stealth, do not cross the LOA, and maximize the use of available cover and concealment. 7-30 During the conduct of the reconnaissance, each RNS team returns to the rally point when any of the following occurs. All their PIR is gathered, the LOA is reached, the allocated time to conduct the reconnaissance has elapsed, enemy contact is made. 7-31 At the rally point, the leader analyzes what information has been gathered and determines if it meets the PIR requirements. If the leader determines that insufficient information to meet the PIR requirements has been gathered, or if the information he and the subordinate leader gathered differs drastically, RNS teams may be sent back to the objective site. In this case, RNS teams alternate areas of responsibilities. For example, if one team reconned from the 6, 3, and 12, then that team now recons from the 6, 9, and 12. 7 32. The RNS elements return undetected to the ORP by the specified time and disseminate information to all patrol members through key leaders 
or moves to a position at least one terrain feature away or one kilometer away to disseminate. To disseminate, the leader has the RTO prepare three sketches of the objective site based on the leader sketch and provides copies to the subordinate leaders to assist in dissemination. The RNS element reports any information requirements or any information requiring immediate attention to higher headquarters and departs for the designated area. 7-33. If contact is made, the RNS elements move to the RP. The reconnaissance element tries to break contact and return to the ORP, secure ruck stacks, and quickly move out of the area. Once they have moved a safe distance away, the leader informs higher headquarters of the situation and takes further instructions from them. A. While in placing surveillance, the reconnaissance element withdraws through the RP to the ORP and follows the same procedures as above. B. While conducting the reconnaissance, the compromised element returns a sufficient volume of fire to allow them to break contact. Surveillance can fire an AT-4 at the largest weapon on the objective. All elements pull off the objective and move to the RP. The senior leader quickly accounts for all personnel and returns to the ORP. Once in the ORP, leadership follows the procedures previously described. The critical tasks for a patrol are secure and occupy the ORP, conduct a leader's reconnaissance of the objective, estimate RP, pinpoint objective, and place surveillance with the surveillance and observation team, position security element if used, conduct reconnaissance by long range surveillance if possible, conduct reconnaissance by short range surveillance if necessary. Teams, move as necessary to successive observation posts. On order, return to RP. Once PIR is gathered, return to ORP. And patrol, link up as directed in the ORP. Disseminate information before moving. Actions on the objective zone reconnaissance, 7-34. The element occupies the initial ORP as discussed. The radio operator calls in spare for occupation of the ORP. The leader confirms the location on the map while subordinate leaders make necessary perimeter adjustments. A. Organization. The reconnaissance team leaders organize the reconnaissance elements. Designate security and reconnaissance elements, assign responsibilities, point man, pace man, in route recorder, and rear security, if not already assigned. Designates, easy, designates easily recognizable rally points, ensures local security at all halts. B. Actions. The patrol recons the zone. They move tactically to the ORP, occupy designated ORP, follow the method designated by the PL, ban, converging routes, or box method. See Table 7-1. The reconnaissance team's recon. During movement, the squad gathers all PIR specified in the order. Reconnaissance team leaders ensure sketches are drawn or digital photos are taken of all enemy hard sites, roads, and trails. Return to the ORP or link up at the rendezvous point on time. When the squad arrives at the new rendezvous point or ORP, the reconnaissance team leaders report to the PL with all gathered information. The PL continues to control the reconnaissance elements, moves with the recon element that establishes the rendezvous point, changes reconnaissance methods as required, designates times for the elements to return to the ORP or to link up, collects all information and disseminates it to the entire patrol. PL briefs all key subordinate leaders on information gathered by other squads, establishing one consolidated sketch if possible and allows team leaders time to brief their teams. With the platoon sergeant, accounts for all personnel. The patrol continues the reconnaissance until all designated areas have been reconned and returns undetected to friendly lines. Table 7-1, Reconnaissance Methods. Fan Method. Uses a series or fan of ORPs. Patrol establishes security at first ORP. Each reconnaissance element moves from the ORP along a different fan-shaped route. Route overlaps with that of other reconnaissance elements. This ensures reconnaissance of the entire area. Leader maintains a reserve at the ORP. When all reconnaissance elements return to the ORP, PL collects and disseminates all information before moving to the next ORP. Converging Routes Method PL selects routes from the ORP through zone to a rendezvous point at the far side of the zone from the ORP. Each reconnaissance element moves and recons along a specified route. They converge, or link up at one time and place. Box method. PL sends reconnaissance elements from the first ORP along routes that form a box, and then sends other elements along routes throughout the box. All teams link up at the far side of the box from the ORP. End Table 7-1. Combat Patrols. 7-35. Combat Patrols are the second type of patrol. Combat Patrols are further divided into raids, ambushes, and security patrols. Units conduct combat patrols to destroy or capture enemy soldiers or equipment, destroy installations, facilities, or key points, or harass enemy forces. Combat patrols also provide security for larger units. 
7-36. In planning a combat patrol, the PL considers the following. A. Task to maneuver units. Normally the platoon headquarters element controls a patrol on a combat patrol mission. The PL makes every effort to maintain squad and fire team integrity, and tasks are assigned to support units. The PL considers the requirements for assaulting the objective, supporting the assault by fire, and security of the entire unit throughout the mission. For the assault on the objective, the PL considers the required actions on the objective, the size of the objective, and the known or presumed strength and disposition of the enemy on or near the objective. The PL considers the weapons available and the type and volume of fires required to provide fire support for the assault on the objective. The PL considers the requirement to secure the platoon at points along the route, at danger areas, at the ORP, along enemy avenues of approach into the objective, and elsewhere during the mission. The PL also designates engagement and disengagement criteria. The PL assigns additional tasks to the squads for demolition, search for EPWs, guarding EPWs, treatment and evacuation or litter teams of friendly casualties, and other tasks required for successful completion of patrol mission, if not already in the SOP. The PL determines who controls any attachments of skilled personnel or special equipment. B. Leader's reconnaissance of the objective. In a combat patrol, the PL has additional considerations for the conduct of the reconnaissance of the objective from the ORP, such as composition of the leader's reconnaissance party. The platoon leader normally brings the following personnel, squad leaders, including weapon squad leader, surveillance team, board observer, security element, depending on time available. Conduct of the leader's reconnaissance. In a combat patrol, the PL considers the following additional actions in the conduct of the leader's reconnaissance of the objective. The PL designates an RP about halfway between the ORP and the objective, using the same characteristics as a rally point. The PL then issues a five-point contingency plan to the security element, and the PL, FO, and surveillance team move to pinpoint the objective and a place the surveillance team with eyes on the objective. PL then moves back to the RP and places the security element. The PL confirms the location of the objective or kill zone, notes the terrain, and identifies where Claymore mines are in place to cover dead space. Any change to the plan is issued to the squad leaders, while overlooking the objective if possible. If the objective is the kill zone for an ambush, the leader's reconnaissance party should not cross the objective. To do so leaves tracks that may compromise the mission. The PL confirms the suitability of the assault and support positions, and routes from them back to the ORP. The PL issues a 5-point contingency plan to the surveillance team before returning to the ORP. Ambush, 7-37 an ambush is a surprise attack from a concealed position on a moving or temporarily halted target. Ambushes are categorized as hasty or deliberate, divided into two types, point or area, and the formation is linear or L-shaped. 7-38 The leader considers various key factors in determining the ambush category, type, and formation, and from these decisions develops the ambush plan. Key factors include coverage, ideally the whole kill zone by fire, met TC, Existing or reinforcing obstacles, including claymore mines, to keep the enemy in the kill zone. Security teams usually have handheld anti tank weapons, such as AT4s or light anti tank weapons, laws, claymore mines, and various means of communication. Security elements or teams to isolate the kill zone. Protection of the assault and support elements with claymore mines or explosives. Assault through the kill zone to the LOA. Note the assault element must be able to move quickly through its own protective obstacles. Time the actions of all elements of the platoon to preclude a loss of surprise. In the event any member of the ambush is compromised, the leader may immediately initiate the ambush. When the ambush is manned for a long time, use only one squad to conduct the entire ambush and determine movement time of the rotating squads from the RP to the ambush site. Categories include Hasty. A unit conducts a hasty ambush when it makes visual contact with an enemy force and has time to establish an ambush without being detected. The actions for a hasty ambush are well rehearsed so that rangers know what to do on the leader's signal. They also know what actions to take if the unit is detected before it is ready to initiate the ambush. Deliberate. A deliberate ambush is conducted at a predetermined location against any enemy element that meets the commander's engagement criteria. The leader requires the following detailed information in planning a deliberate ambush. Size and composition of the targeted enemy and weapons and equipment available to the enemy. Types are point. In a point ambush, rangers deployed to attack an enemy in a single kill zone. Area. In an area, rangers deploy in two or more related point ambushes. Anti-armor. An anti-armor ambush focuses on moving or temporarily halted enemy armored vehicles. Formations. See figure 7-2 on page 7-11.
Linear. In an ambush using a linear formation, the assault and support elements deploy parallel to the enemy's route. This positions both elements on the long axis of the kill zone and subjects the enemy to flanking fire. This formation can be used in close terrain that restricts the enemy's ability to maneuver against a platoon or in open terrain, provided a means of keeping the enemy in the kill zone can be effected. L-shaped. In an L-shaped ambush, the assault element forms a long leg parallel to the enemy's direction of movement along the kill zone. The support element forms a short leg at one end and at a right angle to the assault element. This provides both flanking, which is on the long leg, and enfilading, the short leg fires, against the enemy. The L-shaped ambush can be used at a sharp bend in a trail, road, or stream. It should not be used when the short leg would have to cross a straight road or trail. Hasty Ambush 7-39 The platoon moves quickly to concealed positions. The ambush is not initiated until the majority of the enemy is in the kill zone. The unit does not become decisively engaged but surprises the enemy. The patrol captures, kills, or forces the withdrawal of the entire enemy within the kill zone. 7-40 on order, the patrol withdraws all personnel and equipment in the kill zone from observation and direct fire. The unit does not become decisively engaged by follow-on elements. The platoon continues follow-on operations. Actions on the objective are as follows. See figure 7-3 on page 7-12. Using visual signals, any ranger alerts the unit that an enemy force is in sight. The ranger continues to monitor the location and activities of the enemy force until the team or squad leader leaves him and gives the enemy location and direction of movement. The platoon or squad halts and remains motionless. The PL gives the signal to conduct a hasty ambush, taking care not to alert the enemy of the patrol's presence. The leader determines the best nearby location for a hasty ambush and uses arm and hand signals to direct the unit members to covered and concealed positions. The leader designates the location and extent of the kill zone. Teams and squads move silently to covered and concealed positions, ensuring positions are undetected and have good observation of fields of fire into the kill zone. Security elements move out to cover each flank and the rear of the unit. The leader directs the security elements to move a given distance, set up, and then rejoin the unit on order or after the ambush, the sound of firing ceases. At squad level, the two outside buddy teams normally provide flank security, as well as fires into the kill zone. At platoon level, fire teams make up the security elements. The PL assigns sectors of fire and issues any other commands necessary, such as control measures. The PL initiates the ambush, using the greatest casualty producing weapon available when the largest percentage of the enemy is in the kill zone. The PL controls the rate and distribution of fire, employs indirect fire to support the ambush, orders ceasefire. If the situation dictates, orders the patrol to assault through the kill zone. The PL designates personnel to conduct a hasty search of enemy personnel and process enemy prisoners and equipment. The PL orders the platoon to withdraw from the ambush site along a covered and concealed route. The PL gains accountability, reorganizes as necessary, disseminates information, reports the situation, and continues the mission as directed. Deliberate point or area ambush 7-41 The ambush is in place no later than the time specified in the order. The patrol surprises the enemy and engages their main body, killing or capturing all enemy in the kill zone and destroying equipment based on the commander's intent. The patrol withdraws all personnel and equipment from the objective on order, within the time specified in the order. The patrol obtains all available PIR from the ambush and continues following operations. Actions on the objective are as follows. See figure 7-4 on page 7-15. A. The PL prepares the patrol for the ambush in the ORP. B. The PL prepares to conduct a leader's reconnaissance. Designates the members of the leader's reconnaissance party, squad leader, surveillance team, FO, and possibly a security element. Issues a contingency plan to the platoon sergeant. C. The PL conducts the leader's reconnaissance, ensures the leader's reconnaissance party moves undetected, confirms the objective location and suitability for the ambush, selects a kill zone, posts the surveillance team at the site and issues a contingency plan. The security teams occupy prior to the PL reconning the assault or support by fire positions, securing the flanks of the ambush site and providing early warning. A security team remains in the ORP if the patrol plans to return to the ORP after actions on the objective. If the ORP is abandoned, a rear security element should be in place after plan and before confirms. The objective must be secured prior to initiating reconnaissance of the assault or support of fire positions. Confirm suitability of assault and support positions and routes from the positions to the ORP. Selects position for each weapon system in support by fire position and then designates sectors of fire. Identifies all offensive control measures to be used. Identifies the probable line of deployment 
the assault position, limit of advance, any boundaries or other control measures. If available, the PL can use infrared aiming devices to identify these positions on the ground. D. The PL adjusts the plan based on information from the reconnaissance. They assign positions, designate withdrawal routes. E. The PL confirms the ambush formation. F. Support element leader assigns sectors of fire. In places claim more mines and obstacles as designated. Identifies sectors of fire and in places limiting stakes or uses metal-to-metal -metal contact with the machine gun tripod to prevent fratricide on the objective, overwatches the movement of the assault element into position. G. Once the support element is in position, or on the PL's order, the assault element departs the RP and moves into position. Upon reaching the assault position, leaders identify individual sectors of fire, as assigned by the PL, and places aiming stakes. In places claim more mines to help destroy the enemy in the kill zone, camouflages positions, H. The security element spots the enemy and notifies the PL with reports on the direction of movement, size of the target, and any special weapons or equipment carried. The security element also keeps the PL informed if any enemy forces are following the lead force. I. The PL alerts other elements and determines if the enemy force is too large or if the ambush can engage the enemy successfully. J. The PL initiates the ambush using the highest casualty producing device. The PL may use a command detonated to claim more mine and plans a backup method for initiating the ambush in case the primary means fails. This should also be a casualty producing device such as an individual weapon. This information is passed to all rangers and practiced during rehearsals. K. The PL ensures that the assault and support elements deliver fire with the heaviest, most accurate volume possible on the enemy in the kill zone. In limited visibility, the PL may use infrared lasers to define specific targets in the kill zone. L. Before assaulting the target, the PL gives the signal to lift or shift fires. M. The assault element. Assaults before the remaining enemy can react. Kills or captures enemy in the kill zone. Uses individual movement techniques or bounds by fire teams to move. Upon reaching the LOA, halts and establishes security. If needed, it reestablishes the chain of command and key weapon systems. All rangers load a fresh magazine or drum of ammunition using the buddy system. Lace reports are submitted through the chain of command. The PL submits an initial contact report to higher headquarters. N. The PL directs special teams, EPW search, aid and litter, and demolition to accomplish their assigned task once the assault element has established its LOA. Once the kill zone is clear, collect and secure all EPWs and move them out of the kill zone before searching their bodies. Coordinate for an EPW exchange point to link up with higher headquarters to extract all EPWs and treat them in accordance with. Secure, Search, Segregate, Safeguard, and Speed, the five S's. Search from one side to the other and mark bodies that have been searched to ensure the area is thoroughly covered. Units should use the Clear Out, Search In, the Intelligence technique. Clear from the center of the objective and out, ensuring the area is clear of all enemy combatants. Then search all enemy personnel towards the center of the objective. Search all dead enemy personnel using the Two Ranger Search technique. As the search team approaches a dead enemy soldier, one ranger guards while the other ranger searches. First kick the enemy's weapon away. Second roll the body over, if on the stomach, by lying on top, and when given the go-ahead by the guard, who is positioned at the enemy's head, the searcher rolls the body over on him. This is done for protection in case the enemy soldier has a grenade with the pin pulled underneath him. The searchers then conduct a systematic search of the dead soldier from head to toe, removing all papers and anything new, different type rank, shoulder boards, different unit patch, pistol, weapon, or MBDs. They note if the enemy has a fresh or shabby haircut and the condition of the uniform and boots. They note the radio frequency and then they search the SOI, maps, documents, and overlays. Once the body has been thoroughly searched, the search team continues in this manner until all enemy personnel in and near the kill zone have been examined. Identify, collect, and prepare all equipment to be carried back or destroyed. Evacuate and treat friendly wounded first, then enemy wounded if time permits. The demolition team prepares dual primed explosives or incendiary grenades and awaits a signal to initiate. This is normally the last action performed before the unit departs the objective and may signal the security element to return to the ORP. All actions on the objective with stationary assault lines are the same, with the exception of the search teams. To provide security within the teams to the far side of the kill zone during the search, they work in three ranger teams. Before the search begins, the rangers move all KIAs to the near side of the kill zone. Oh, if enemy reinforcements try to penetrate the kill zone, 
The flank security engages to prevent the assault element from being compromised. P. The PL directs the unit's withdrawal from the ambush site. Elements normally withdraw in the reverse order of what they establish their positions in. The elements may return to the release point or directly to the ORP, depending on the distance between elements. The security element of the ORP is alert to assist the platoon's return to the ORP. It maintains security for the ORP while the rest of the platoon prepares to leave. If possible, all elements should return to the location where they separated from the main body. This location should usually be the RP. Q. The PL and platoon sergeant direct actions at the ORP, including accountability of personnel and equipment and recovery of rucksacks and other equipment left at the ORP during the ambush. R. The PL disseminates information or moves the platoon to a safe location, no less than one kilometer or one train feature away from the objective, and disseminates information. S. As required, the PL and FO execute indirect fires to cover the platoon's withdrawal. Performing a raid. 7-42 The patrol initiates the raid no later than the time specified in the order, surprises the enemy, assaults the objective, and accomplishes its assigned mission within the commander's intent. The patrol does not become decisively engaged en route to the objective. The patrol obtains all available PIR from the raid objective and continues follow-on operations. A. Planning Considerations A raid is a form of attack, usually small-scale, involving a swift entry into hostile territory to secure information, confuse the enemy, or destroy installations, followed by a planned withdrawal. Squads do not conduct raids. The sequence of platoon actions for a raid is similar to those for an ambush. Additionally, the assault element of the platoon may have to conduct a breach of an obstacle. It may have additional tasks to perform on the objective, such as demolition of fixed facilities. Fundamentals of the raid include surprise and speed, infiltrate and surprise the enemy without being detected, coordinated fires, seal off the objective with well-synchronized direct and indirect fires, violence of action, overwhelm the enemy with fire and maneuver, planned withdrawal, Withdraw from the objective in an organized manner, maintaining security. B. Actions on the objective raid. See figure 7-5 on page 7-18. 1. The patrol moves to and occupies the ORP according to the patrol SOP. The patrol prepares for the leader's recon. 2. The PL squad leaders and selected personnel conduct a leader's reconnaissance. PL leaves a 5-point contingency plan with the platoon sergeant. PL establishes the release point, pinpoints the objective, contacts the platoon sergeant to prepare soldiers' weapons and equipment, and places the surveillance team to observe the objective and verifies and updates intelligence information. Upon emplacing the surveillance team, the PL provides a five-point contingency plan. Security teams are brought forward on the leader's reconnaissance and emplaced before the leader's reconnaissance leaves the release point. Leader's reconnaissance verifies location of and routes to security, support, and assault positions. Leaders conduct the reconnaissance without compromising the patrol. Leaders normally conduct a reconnaissance of support by fire position first, then the assault position. 3. The PL confirms, denies, or modifies a plan and issues instructions to squad leaders, assigns positions and withdrawal routes to all elements, designates control measures on the objective, element objectives, lanes, limits of advance, target reference points, and assault line, allows squad leaders time to disseminate information and confirm that their elements are ready. 4. Security elements occupy designated positions, moving undetected into positions that provide early warning and can seal off the objective from outside support or reinforcement. 5. A support element leader moves the support element to designated positions. The support element leader ensures the element can place well-aimed fire on the objective. 6. The PL moves with the assault element into the assault position. The assault position is normally the last covered and concealed position before reaching the objective. As it passes through the assault position, the platoon deploys into its assault formation. Its squads and fire teams deploy to place the bulk of their firepower to the front as they assault the objective. They also make contact with the surveillance team to confirm any enemy activity on the objective, ensure that the assault position is close enough for immediate assault if the element is detected early, move into position undetected, and establish local security and fire control measures. 7. Element leaders inform the PL when their elements are in position and ready. 8. The PL initiates the raid and directs the support element to fire. 9. Upon gaining fire superiority, 
The PL directs the assault element to move towards the objective. Assault element holds the fire until engaged or until ready to penetrate the objective. PL signals the support element to lift or shift fires. The element lifts or shifts fires as directed, shifting fire to the flanks of targets or areas as directed in the order. 10. The assault element attacks and secures the objective. The assault element may be required to breach a wire obstacle. As the platoon or its assault element moves onto the objective, it increases the volume and accuracy of fires. Squad leaders assign specific targets or objectives for their fire team. Only when these direct fires keep the enemy suppressed can the rest of the unit maneuver. As the assault element gets closer to the enemy, there's more emphasis on suppression and less on maneuver. Ultimately, all but one fire team may be suppressing to allow that one fire team to break into the enemy position. Throughout the assault, rangers use proper individual movement techniques and fire teams retain their basic shallow wedge formation. The platoon does not get online to sweep across the objective. Assault element assaults through the objective to the designated LOA. Assault element leader establishes local security along the LOA and consolidates and reorganizes as necessary. They provide lace reports to the PL and platoon sergeant. The platoon establishes security, reorganizes key weapons, provides first aid, and prepares wounded rangers for medevac. They redistribute ammunition and supplies and relocate selected weapons to alternate positions if leaders believe that the enemy may have pinpointed them during the attack. They adjust other positions for mutual support. The squad and team leader provide lace reports to the PL. The PL or platoon sergeant reorganizes the patrol based on contact. On order, special teams accomplish all assigned tasks under the supervision of the PL, who is positioned to control the patrol. Special team leaders report to the PL when assigned tasks are complete. 11. On order or signal of the PL, the assault element withdraws from the objective. Using prearranged signals, the assault line begins an organized withdrawal from the objective site, maintaining control and security throughout the withdrawal. The assault element bounds back near the original assault line and begins a single file withdrawal through the anti-personnel landmine choke point. All rangers move through the choke point for an accurate count. Once the assault element is a safe distance from the objective and the head count is confirmed, the platoon can withdraw the support element. If the support elements were a part of the assault line, they withdraw together and security is signaled to withdraw. Once the support is a safe distance off the objective, they notify the PL who contacts the security element and signals them to withdraw. All security teams link up at the release point and notify the PL before moving to the ORP. Personnel return into the ORP, immediately secure their equipment and establish all around security. Once the security element returns, the platoon moves out of the objective area as soon as possible. Before withdrawing, the demolition team activates devices and charges. Support element or designated personnel and the assault element maintain local security during the withdrawal. Leaders report updated accountability and status to the PL and platoon sergeant. 12. Squads withdraw from the objective in the order designated in the order to the ORP. Account for personnel and equipment, disseminate information, redistribute ammunition and equipment as required. 13. The PL reports mission accomplishment to higher headquarters and continues the mission. Reports raid assessment to higher headquarters, informs higher headquarters of any information requirements and PIR gathered. Supporting tasks 7-43 Supporting tasks include a link-up, patrol debriefing, and occupation of an ORP. A link-up is a meeting of friendly ground forces. Link-ups depend on control, detailed planning, communications, and stealth. This includes A. Task Standard. The units link up at the time and place specified in the order. The enemy does not surprise the main bodies. The link-up units establish a consolidated chain of command. B. Site Location. The leader identifies a tentative link-up site by map reconnaissance or other imagery, or higher headquarters designates a link-up site. The link-up site should have the following characteristics. Ease of recognition. Cover and concealment from ground and air. No tactical value to the enemy. Location away from natural lines of drift. Defendable for a short period of time. Multiple access and escape routes. C. Execution. Link-up procedure begins as the unit moves to the link-up point. The steps of this procedure are 1. The stationary unit performs link-up actions. Occupies the link-up rally point no later than the time specified in the order. Establishes all-around security. Establishes communications and prepares to accept the moving unit. The security team clears the immediate area around the link-up point. It then marks the link-up point with the coordinated recognition signal. 
The security team moves to a covered and concealed position and observes the link-up point and immediate area around it. 2. The moving unit performs link-up actions. The unit reports its location using phase lines, checkpoints, or other control measures. Holds at a safe distance from the link-up point in a covered and concealed position, the link-up rally point. 3. The PL and a contact team. Prepare to make physical contact with a stationary unit. Issue a contingency plan to the PSG. Maintain communications with the platoon and verifies near and far recognition signals for link-up, good visibility and limited visibility. Exchange far and near recognition signals with the link-up unit. Conduct final coordination with the link-up unit. 4. The Stationary Unit Guides the patrol from its link-up rally point to the stationary unit link-up rally point. Link-up is complete by the time specified in the order. The main body of the stationary unit is alerted before the moving unit is brought forward. 5. The patrol continues its mission according to the order. D. Coordination Checklist The PL coordinates or obtains the following information from the unit that the patrol will link up with. Exchange frequencies, call signs, codes, and other communication information. Verify near and far recognition signals. Exchange fire coordination measures. Determine command relationship with the link-up unit. Plan for consolidation of chain of command. Plan actions following link-up. Exchange control measures such as phase lines and contact points as appropriate. 7-44. Immediately after the platoon or squad returns, personnel from higher headquarters conduct a thorough debrief. This may include all members of the platoon or the leaders, RTOs, and any attached personnel. Normally the debriefing is oral. Sometimes a written report is required. Information on the written report should include Size and composition of the unit conducting the patrol Mission of the platoon, such as type of patrol, location, and purpose Departure and return times Routes Use checkpoints and grid coordinates for each leg or include an overlay Detailed description of terrain and enemy positions that were identified Results of any contact with the enemy. Unit status at the conclusion of the patrol mission, including the disposition of dead or wounded rangers. Conclusions or recommendations. 7-45 The ORP is a point out of sight, sound, and small arms range of the objective area. It is normally located in the direction that the platoon plans to move after completion of actions on the objective. The ORP is tentative until the objective is pinpointed. This includes A. Occupation of the ORP. 1. The patrol halts beyond sight and sound of the tentative ORP. 2 to 400 meters in good visibility, 1 to 200 meters in limited visibility. 2. The patrol establishes a security halt according to the unit SLP. 3. After issuing a 5 point contingency plan to the platoon sergeant, the PL moves forward with a reconnaissance element to conduct a leader's reconnaissance of the ORP. 4. For a squad size patrol, the PL moves forward with a compass man and one member of each fire team to confirm the ORP. After physically clearing the ORP location, the PL leaves two rangers at the 6 o'clock position facing in opposite directions. The PL issues a contingency plan and returns with the compass man to guide the patrol forward. The PL guides the patrol forward into the ORP with one team occupying from 3 o'clock to 12 o'clock to 9 o'clock and the other occupying from 9 o'clock through 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock. 5. For a platoon size patrol, the PL RTO, Weasel, three ammunition bearers, a team leader, a squad automatic weapon gunner, and a rifleman go on the leader's reconnaissance for the ORP and position themselves at 10, 2, and 6 o'clock. First squad in the order of march is the base squad, occupying from 10 to 2 o'clock. They are arranged. Trail squads occupy from 2 to 6 o'clock and 6 to 10 o'clock, respectively. Patrol headquarters element occupies the center of the triangle. B. Actions in the ORP. The unit prepares for the mission in the ORP. Once the leader's reconnaissance pinpoints the objective, the platoon sergeant generally lines up rucksacks according to unit SOP in the center of the ORP. 7-46. Patrol Base. A patrol base is a security perimeter that is set up when a squad or platoon conducting a patrol halts for an extended period. Patrol bases should not be occupied for more than 24 hour periods except in an emergency. A patrol never uses the same patrol base twice. A. Use. Patrol bases are typically used to avoid detection by eliminating movement, to hide a unit during a long, detailed reconnaissance, to perform maintenance on weapons, equipment, eat, and rest, to plan and issue orders, to reorganize after infiltrating an enemy area, to establish a base from which to execute several consecutive or concurrent operations. B. 
Site Selection. The leader selects the tentative site from a map or by aerial reconnaissance. Characteristics of a patrol base include a site that is easily defendable for short periods of time, away from natural lines of drift, away from high-speed avenues of approach, provides cover and concealment from both ground and air, and provides little to no tactical value to the enemy. The site's suitability is confirmed and secured before the unit moves into it. Plans to establish a patrol base include selecting an alternate patrol base site. The alternate site is used if the first site is unsuitable or the patrol unexpectedly evacuates. C. Planning Considerations Leaders planning for a patrol base consider the mission and passive and active security measures. A patrol base is located to allow the unit to accomplish its mission. This includes observation posts and communication with observation posts, patrol or platoon fire plan, alert plan, withdrawal plan from the patrol base, including withdrawal routes and a rally point, rendezvous point, or alternate patrol base. A security system to make sure that specific rangers are awake at all times. Enforcement of camouflage, noise, and light discipline. The conduct of required activities with minimum movement and noise. Priorities of work. D. Security measures. Select terrain the enemy would probably consider of little tactical value. Select terrain that is off main lines of drift. Select difficult terrain that would impede foot movement, such as an area of dense vegetation, preferably bushes and trees that spread close to the ground. Select terrain near a source of water. Select terrain that can be defended for a short period and that offers good cover and concealment. Avoid known or suspected enemy positions. Avoid built up areas. Avoid ridges and hilltops, except as needed for maintaining communications. Avoid small valleys. Avoid roads and trails. E. Occupation 1. A patrol base is reconned and occupied in the same manner as an ORP, with the exception that the platoon typically plans to enter at a 90 degree turn. The PL leaves a two ranger observation post at the turn, and the patrol covers any tracks from the turn to the patrol base. 2. The platoon moves into the patrol base. Squad sized patrols generally occupy a cigar shaped perimeter, platoon sized patrols generally occupy a triangle shaped perimeter. 3. The PL and another designated leader inspect and adjust the entire perimeter as necessary. 4. After the PL has checked each squad sector, each squad leader sends a two ranger RNS team to the PL at the command post. The PL issues the three RNS teams a contingency plan, reconnaissance method, and detailed guidance on what to look for enemy, water, built up areas or human habitat, roads, trails, or possible rally points. 5. Where each RNS team departs is based on the PL's guidance. The RNS team moves a prescribed distance and direction and re enters where the PL dictates. Squad sized patrols do not normally send out an RNS team at night. RNS teams prepare a sketch of the area to the squad front if possible. The patrol remains 100% alert during this reconnaissance. If the PL feels the patrol was tracked or followed, he may elect to wait in silence at 100% alert before sending out RNS teams. The RNS teams may use methods such as the I, the box, or the T. Regardless of the method chosen, the RNS team must be able to provide the PL with the same information. Upon completion of RNS, the PL confirms or denies a patrol base location and either moves a patrol or begins priorities of work. F. Passive or clandestine patrol base squad. The purpose of a passive patrol base is for a squad or smaller size element to rest. Unit moves as a whole and occupies in force. Squad leader ensures that the unit moves in at a 90 degree angle to the order of movement. A Claymore mine is in place on the route entering the patrol base. Alpha and Bravo team sits back to back facing outward, ensuring that at least one individual from each team is alert and providing security. G. Priorities of work, platoon and squad. Once the PL is briefed by the RNS teams and determines the area suitable for the patrol base, the leader establishes or modifies defensive work priorities in order to establish the defense of the patrol base. Priorities of work are not a laundry list of tasks to be completed. To be effective, priorities of work consist of a task, a given time, and a measurable performance standard. For each priority of work, a clear standard is issued to guide the element in the successful accomplishment of each task. It is also designated whether the work is controlled in a centralized or decentralized manner. Priorities of work are determined according to METTC and may include, but are not limited to, the following tasks. 1. Security. Continuous. Prepare to use all passive and active measures to cover the entire perimeter at all times, regardless of the percentage of weapons used to cover all the terrain. 
Readjust after RNS team's return or readjust based on current priority of work, such as weapons maintenance. Employ all elements, weapons, and personnel to meet conditions of the terrain, enemy, or situation. Assign sectors of fire to all personnel and weapons. Develop squad leader sector sketches and platoon fire plan. Confirm location of fighting positions for cover, concealment, and observation, and fields of fire. Squad leader supervised placement of aiming stakes and claymore mines. Only use one point of entry and exit, and count personnel in and out. Everyone is challenged according to the unit SOP. AC fighting positions are prepared at least 18 inches deep at the front and sloping gently from front to rear, with a grenade sump if possible. 2. Withdrawal Plan The PL designates the signal for withdrawal, order of withdrawal, and the platoon rendezvous point or alternate patrol base. 3. Communication Continuous Communications are maintained with higher headquarters, OPs, and within the unit. This may be rotated between the patrol's RTOs to allow accomplishment of continuous radio monitoring, radio maintenance, act as runners for the PL, or conduct other priorities work. 4. Mission Preparation and Planning The PL uses the patrol base to plan, issue orders, rehearse, inspect, and prepare for future missions. 5. Weapons and Equipment Maintenance The PL ensures that machine guns, weapon systems, communications equipment, and night vision devices, as well as other equipment, are maintained. These items are not disassembled at the same time for maintenance, no more than 33% at a time, and weapons are not disassembled at night. If one machine gun is down, then security for all remaining systems is raised. 6. Water Resupply The platoon sergeant organizes watering parties as necessary. The watering party carries canteens in an empty rucksack or duffel bag and has communications and a contingency plan prior to departure. 7. Mess Plan at a minimum, security and weapons maintenance are performed prior to mess. Normally, no more than half the platoon eats at once. Rangers typically eat 1 to 3 meters behind their fighting positions. Rest and sleep plan management. The patrol conducts rest as necessary to prepare for future operations. Alert plan and stand to. The PL states the alert posture and the stand to time. The plan ensures all positions are checked periodically, OPs are relieved periodically, and at least one leader is always alert. The patrol typically conducts stand to at a time specified by the unit SOP, such as 30 minutes before and after beginning evening nautical twilight, BMNT, or ending evening nautical twilight, EENT. Resupply Distribute or crossload ammunition, meals, equipment, and other items. Sanitation and personal hygiene The platoon sergeant and medic ensure a slit trench is prepared and marked. All rangers brush their teeth, wash faces, shave, and wash hands, armpits, groin, and feet. The patrol does not leave trash behind. Movement to Contact 7-47 The movement to contact is one of the five types of offensive operations. A movement to contact gains or regains contact with the enemy. Once contact is made, the unit develops a situation. Normally a platoon conducts a movement to contact as part of a larger force. The two techniques for conducting a movement to contact are search and attack and cordon and search. A. Search and attack. The search and attack technique is used when the enemy is dispersed, expected to avoid contact, disengaged or withdraws, or their movement in an area is denied. The search and attack technique involves the use of multiple platoons, squads, and fire teams, coordinating their actions to make contact with the enemy. Platoons typically try to find the enemy and then fix and finish them. They combine patrolling techniques with the requirement to conduct hasty or deliberate attacks once the enemy has been found. 1. Planning Considerations Factors of MET-TC Requirement for decentralized execution Requirement for mutual support Length of operations Minimize soldiers' load to improve stealth and speed Resupply and medevac Positioning key leaders and equipment Employment of key weapons Requirement for patrol bases Concept for entering the zone of action Concept for link-ups while in contact. 2. Critical performance measures. The platoon locates the enemy without being detected. Once engaged, fixes the enemy in position and maneuvers against the enemy. Maintains security throughout actions to avoid being flanked. B. Cordon and search. A technique of conducting a movement to contact that involves isolating a target area and searching suspect locations within that target area to capture or destroy possible enemy forces and contraband. A platoon uses the cordon and search technique as part of a larger unit. It can be tasked as a cordon or the search element for the company or battalion. 1. Planning 
Immediately on receipt of the mission, the company level commander conducts a reconnaissance of the target to be searched. Ideally, the intelligence officer can provide maps or satellite imagery. If possible, avoid sending a patrol to the area of the target since the patrol may unnerve the target and cause them to flee prior to the search. However, depending on how much information that a commander has, he may have no alternative to conduct a reconnaissance to determine where the target is located. The patrol may not alert the target if patrols frequent the area, but the patrol does not need to loiter in the area any longer than necessary. 2. Preparing Rehearsals are key to a successful cordon and search operation. Units should develop their own requirements for what to rehearse. 3. Organization of cordon and search elements. Outer cordon element, security and support element. Inner cordon element, search element. Assault force, detention and collection element. 4. Execution. As the unit approaches the objective, the inner cordon and assault forces make sure they have allowed enough time for the outer cordon force to set before actually arriving at the target. The locals know the sound of military vehicles, and any subversive element who may be home will likely try to flee on hearing the unit approach. While the impact may not be immediate, vehicles and foot traffic, aside from curious onlookers, around the objective will decline quickly once the outer cordon is set, facilitating the movement of other elements to the objective. Task Standards 7-48 The platoon moves no later than the time specified in the order and makes contact with the smallest element possible. The main body is not surprised by the enemy. Once the platoon makes contact, it maintains contact. The platoon destroys squad size and smaller size elements and fixes elements larger than a squad. The platoon maintains sufficient fighting force capable of conducting further combat operations. 7-49 Reports of enemy locations and contact are forwarded. If not detected by the enemy, the PL initiates a hasty attack. The platoon sustains no casualties from friendly fire. The platoon is prepared to initiate further movement within 25 minutes of contact, and all personnel and equipment are accounted for. End chapter 7. Alright, that concludes one long chapter in the Ranger Handbook, chapter 7. Uh, it is very important though, I mean all these patrols and patrolling principles are the bread and butter of Ranger School. Uh, so hopefully you got something out of that. As always, if you're looking for more resources, check out our website, armyflashcards.com. And we'll see you next time for chapter 8 of the Ranger Handbook.